Screenwriter Stephen Gagan is here, a journalist and a short story writer as well as a screenwriter. He is author of the screenplay for the film The Rules of Engagement. His many television credits include The Practice, American Gothic, and NYPD Blue. His most recent screenplay is for Traffic, directed by Steven Soderbergh. Here is the trailer for that film. Michael Douglas. Just tell me where my daughter is. Don Cheadle. We got you making a deal on tape. Benicio Del Toro. It's all about the money. Dennis Quaid. Stay out of things. And Catherine Zeta-Jones. Now get out of the car and shoot him in the head. Traffic. Oh, <laughs> I am pleased to have <laughs> Stephen Gagan here. I just said... <laughs> <laughs> I just said she's a good-looking woman, you said, and a very nice person, too. I did. <laughs> it's true. How did this happen for you? Well, um, I'd been interested in writing about the military. We were just talking about Black Hawk Down. I was interested Which in writing... But you're also writing for Ridley Scott. Right. I was uh, interested in the military. I wanted to do a satire, and uh, they introduced me to Ed Zwick, the studio did, and uh, he said, let's do the war on drugs. We pitched a satire, and they set it up. Uh, I did a lot of research, realized it couldn't really be a satire. It felt like a personal issue, not an abstract issue, and it uh, had to be a drama. About that time, Steven Soderbergh and Laura Bickford called up. Uh, yeah. She's the producer with right. Steven. And uh, they had the rights to a British miniseries, Traffic. So I'd Which had, had already been seen on television. It was about 10 years old, and uh, they, we sat down at lunch, and they said multiple storylines, you know, four separate narratives on the subject. And I was sitting there... Soderbergh like, was already happy. <laughs> exactly. Well, and and uh, I had had a couple years of research um, and a big a big writer's block. I was having a hard time getting started, and they said we've got a we've got a spine of you know this idea of multiple storylines. And I'd been having a, a problem because there was just there was too much information. I couldn't handle it with one yeah. protagonist, and uh, it was like a dam broke. Because you had the spine from the se series, or because. Something well, else. really, we you know we made up one of the storylines. Two of them are based on the miniseries, uh, the British miniseries Channel Four. But um, really, it was the idea of taking this massive subject, the war on drugs, and attacking it from different perspectives. Instead of just having you know one main character, we could have really four separate storylines that look at this huge issue from different perspectives. Tell me about screenwriting. So you have a narrative here. Uh, that's, it, this is an interesting movie in a sort of documentary form. It's shot with very fast-moving cameras, uh, low light, I guess, a lot of things like that. Uh, dialogue's still very important in this kind of thing with four storylines. What's the challenge for you? What's the mountain you got to climb? Well, it's, in this movie, it was, it was unique. There, there are 130 speaking roles, which is, uh, is, is a lot. It's a lot yeah. more than your average movie. And you have sort of t maybe 10 main characters. So I think, um, you know, the first and most important thing is just that they have different voices, that they sound, they sound real. You know, they sound like that a, a, a Mexican police officer sounds like a Mexican police officer. And I was very lucky there that Benicio Del Toro, who really helped change that storyline, had a lot of input. He, uh, he really helped me with that, and he was down there meeting with the now police. How does he help you? Well, he, you know, he met with police in, on the border, and um, he had a lot of, just a lot of good insights about the character. And so he was talking with Steven Soderbergh, and we were able to you know, adjust the, adjust the, the storyline based now, on his ideas. Do you like actors and directors coming to you saying, look, fix this this way, or make this better, or this could be more interesting, or guess what I just learned last night? You know, it's, it's strange. On the, on the one hand, uh, I have probably writers, you know, the word rewrite is not your favorite word, but actually, I find that when you're working with really good people, you're all sort of in it for the same thing. You know, you're rolling up your sleeves, you're collaborating, and, uh, you know, all of the sort of BS aside, if the ideas sound really good, it's exciting because yeah. you, you honestly make it better, and that's that's not a joke. And you end up, you know, with someone like Steven Soderbergh, who's a, a great writer in his own right, uh, and a great editor, and a great director, and you know, he's he's like a great cinematographer. And a great cinematographer. <laughs> he shot the movie. It's like you know, he's got the crossover dribble. Yeah. He comes to you and says, you know, I think this line oh, of dialogue could sound better. You're like, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Yes, Soderbergh. Yes, maybe, maybe. Let's <laughs> like, try. It just might. You know, but I might you... look better later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, of course, he can always fix it in the editing room, too. Uh, or he can fix it while he's shooting it and yeah. then fix it in the editing room. The notion of where you start. Yeah. Now, do you, did you decide that or did somebody else decide that? You where know, does a movie start? That, that's, one of the, that's basically the hardest thing. And yeah. It had me really boggled up. Um, I had trouble getting going. I had talked many conversations with Steven. He was shooting the Limey, then Aaron Brockovich. I mean, this is an ongoing process. And we'd meet once a week for dinner when we could have time. And I would sort of nod and say, oh, it's going great. You know, I'm way down the road. And of course, I hadn't typed fade in yet. And he helped me figure out different things. And like, why don't you try this? And still nothing. 
and I was at this house I'd rented to write the movie in on the, on the beach, and I, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, and there was a voice in my head, I mean, the oddest voice, literally just said, duck salad? You never eat duck salad. And I was like, what on earth? I sat straight up in bed. Yeah. My computer was at the desk over there. I went over, and it was Catherine Zeta-Jones' character mm. at the Nancy Reagan dining room at the Country Club in La Jolla, and she was talking with her friends, kind of women who lunch, and right. they were talking about duck salad, and that was the first scene I wrote in the movie, and it happens maybe 30 minutes in now or 20 minutes in. But you were rolling then? But once that broke, uh, six weeks later I had a draft, maybe seven weeks later. And then the ending, when you end the film, is it, is it where you ended it, or did you change that too? It's basically where we ended it. I mean, we were constantly tinkering with, because you have all these things coming together, and you're constantly tinkering with whether, really basically where the audience is going to go up, going to go down, you know, catharsis and happy ending, Yahoo, war on drugs, or an even ending like a dying fall. Mm -hmm. um, and we adjusted a, a couple of things, but primarily I think, I think tonally it, it stayed very true to what, certainly what Stephen and I have been talking about from the very beginning, and Laura Bickford also. Let me talk a little bit about you. Uh, college at Harvard? No, no, actually, I uh, kicked out of high school on the last day of my senior year. Is that year. right? Yeah. The reason I thought that you know some people I know who went to Harvard. Uh, yes, uh, I do. Um, you know, I've visited Harvard, but I... Uh, <laughs> You've been to Cambridge. <laughs> I've been yeah. to Cambridge. They let me on the campus. <laughs> I got to, uh, I think I had lunch there, but... <laughs> the, uh, no, I was expelled from Kentucky Country Day, actually in traffic. At, at, what, at what age? Uh, at 17. And I, then what did you do? I was driving a go-kart through the administration building. <laughs> That's it. And they said... Uh, <laughs> Doesn't play in Kentucky. They said, no, maybe, uh, maybe in the Northeast you get away with that kind of junk. But uh, I, I went to work for a photographer for National Geographic, and I got to do a lot of traveling. And, uh, but did you think of yourself as a writer? I did, from an early age. You know, I was writing short stories. We had a, another mutual friend, actually, who uh, had, you know, sort of introduced me to some writers when I was young and I I, t I told my mother actually when I was seven I said I wanted to be a writer and she said this is in Kentucky she said now honey you'll you know she was like oh she said you'll live in misery and go and by go I mean die teaching other people's children badly <laughs> I was like is that right I'm seven I was like that sounds terrible oh, I can't do that I'll work for Procter and Gamble yes I'll be a salesman I, and it's okay she said, salesmen do very well you know people like you you'll do very well but what? It, it worked out well. When did, what was the first thing you wrote? I, I wrote a short story called The Year With No Winter that got published in the Iowa Review when I was maybe 20. In the Iowa Review? Yes. And uh, so that was some, you know, some good... It's where they have the writer's school? Yeah, the, the writer's workshops there. And uh, that, that gave me uh, encouragement. It kept me going through a lot of, a lot of uh, other times. Yeah. It, and were you directed towards screenplays? I mean, was that where you wanted to go? You know, it's strange. I, I, uh, I woke up one day, I was living in New York in a fifth floor walk up, and it was one of those August days where it's 100 degrees yeah. with 100% humidity, and I'm sitting there trying to, you know, I, I spent six weeks on the first paragraph of a short right. story, right. and it's terrible. I was like, you know, I wonder if maybe there's something, another art form I could pursue <laughs> right here, right now. And uh, I sat down and wrote a screenplay, and it happened very easily. What was that? Um, it was called The Underachievers, oddly enough. And um, I packaged up, I knew one guy worked in a mail room in, uh, Los Angeles. I didn't know anybody else there, and I sent it to him. Yeah. And it, weird is he gave it to somebody, and it got to somebody else, and somebody else. And, and television? You started writing for television at some point? I did. I wrote a, a sample episode of The Simpsons, and that got me around. I met a bunch of people, and then I, I got a break on American Gothic, and I was able to write a bunch of episodes, and then, you know, just sort of weirdly, I worked for David Kelly on the uh, practice. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy, and he's, he's so talented. He doesn't really need writers. Because um, he know, writes it all himself. Because he does it all himself. But uh, I got to work for David Milch on NYPD Blue, mm -hmm. who's, uh, you know, really talented. And then we, uh, we actually, it's a total fluke, but we won the Emmy for, for an episode that, uh, that I wrote with him. And so it, it was just literally blind luck. And at that yeah. point, I said, you know, I, I've gotten so lucky in television, I'm going to just concentrate on the movies. First big movie, Rules of Engagement? That was the first one. Uh, I was able to work, I worked with Michael Tolkien on a screenplay. Um, yeah. He wrote The Player. Right. And I, uh, I sort of lucked into working with him. We wrote a satire about Bill Gates and Microsoft, and uh, I learned a great deal from him. And then, yeah. and then at that point, I sort of did a couple other things, and Rules of Engagement got made, and then uh, Traffic, and now I've got a couple other things coming down the pike. Well, you're right? doing the thing with Ridley Scott and, and Black Hawk Down. Yeah, Black Hawk Down. Yeah. About can the, you write more than one at a time? I cannot. Uh, I, I can act, I can smile and nod and say it's possible, but it's it's really hard to. The brain um, doesn't really switch gears that easily. I've wanted to bring together a, a, a group of screenwriters, and I still want to do that at some point. Just talk about the craft, but give me some sense about how it's different from everything else. 
Well, you know, it's a, like, I love fiction. I love novels. You know, I love that art form. And a lot of times you go to write a, write a screenplay and you're dramatizing something and you, you, you wish you had the internal monologue. You know, that's in a novel. You've got the thoughts and you can skip time here, there, everywhere. You know, the, the thing that the camera does for you is you literally focus the viewer's attention and you can control where they're looking and you have a lot of uh, autonomy in that way. And, um, but it's, uh, it's weird. At first, I think when you're learning the craft, it, it feels impossible. You can't get, at least I couldn't get across what I was trying to say. I felt limited. And then sort of, I think at some point something happens, you start to embrace, you embrace these, you know, they're incredible limitations of budget and movement and where people can go. And, uh, and then at one point it just started to sort of become freeing somehow. I, it would also seem to me to be, I guess, good or bad. Like a playwright, an actor can do incredible things with your words. And so therefore it can almost magnify, enhance, ennoble, <clears throat> All things that and can take stuff and it can go both make ways. Make it majestic, but, uh, or also can go. <laughs> I'll tell you, in something like traffic, though, where yeah. you you know you've got Steven Soderbergh assembling a, an ensemble cast that's kind of off the chart. I mean, right. I mean you've seen it. You, cameo cameos, roles by Albert Finney. <laughs> I mean, Albert Finney and Dennis you know people, Quaid. yeah, Salma Hayek, and people Salma, just turning exactly. up everywhere. But you know, we had you know it's not just the performance that's astonishing but we had great input from the actors you know they they do the line they think about yeah. the character and they're smart people i mean michael douglas has been around a long time and you just have these ideas you knew if you're open yeah. you know I, I watched i mean frankly watching benicio say the, you know say the say the lines it's uh they were taking our picture last night and he sort of said under his breath he said the writer and the thespian <laughs> And I thought, you know, we could go places. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect you will. Thank you for coming. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.